the roads are windy. If you're new here, welcome. And if you are a longtime listener, welcome. I'm going to start, I guess. I guess I'm just going to dive right in. So I've been in somatic therapy. I've been in all kinds of therapy, but I've been in somatic therapy since um, August 2020. And it was a really intense time, you might remember. And ever since then, it's now May 2022. And I've been seeing the same therapist since then, just about every week. And I'm really grateful and privileged to have health insurance from my husband's job that allows me to have access to this because it's been life changing. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about therapy and where you can find a therapist. A lot of people ask me how to find a therapist, so I'm going to get into that. And if you have any other questions, feel free to um, reach out and ask. I'm happy to help. So working with this therapist, the number one thing that came up again and again and again were challenges with money. And challenges looked like... um, me working so hard and putting so much pressure on myself to accomplish purpose with integrity and to accomplish uh, bringing my purpose into form and helping others. But at the same time, and and, in loving my work, I really love creating art speak. It's awesome. And at the same time, not allowing myself to get paid. And in our business, you know, we officially created EarthSpeak in 2019, late 2019. And it was in early, mid 2020 that we kind of started getting going. And within that first uh, year, we made six figures as a business. And then year after that, we also made six figures as a business and we grew a team and we were having a great time. And that whole time I was essentially working for free because of my money wounds (laughs) and I could have paid myself. It would have been cool, but there was something in me that was saying that at all costs to maintain my freedom and maintain my integrity, I cannot get paid. And this was showing up in my body. This was showing up in my mind, not necessarily in those words, but, um, and it showed up through that my actions and the decisions I made as a business owner and co-owner. So even though we had grown a thriving business and we had a team and we were paying the team, I, something in me subconsciously, okay. So a lot of this was subconscious until I did the therapy and was able to address these parts with love, with somatic therapy with nervous system support, which I'll get into, but subconsciously, my subconscious was directing my actions and decisions such that no matter what, I would not allow myself to get paid anything significant. Like I got paid here and there some money, but it was not like enough to call it like really making a living. And When I dove into therapy, what this ended up looking like, well, actually, I'm going to take a step back here. This started to cause problems in my marriage because, as you can imagine, my husband was like, "Um, you know, we live in the most expensive place in America for his job. And he was feeling a lot of pressure being the only income earner in our household. And that was putting pressure on us and it was putting pressure. Ultimately, I'm grateful for this because it was just the right push that I needed to be really committed. I don't know committed, but it, it, it helped catalyze my big integration that came through because ultimately all of this work I was doing without getting reciprocity from it and financially was not healthy. And what therapy showed me, so somatic therapy, is, you know, of course there's talking and you talk about the story a little bit, you know, you talk about what you know at the surface here, but then we go into the body and what's happening with that is the therapist will be like, well, I'll I'll bring up something. I'll be like, you know, I'm really feeling a lot of pressure. I'm feeling really frustrated or da, 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 da. And then she would ask me like, okay, what are you noticing in your body? What sensations are you noticing? 
and we would go in and it, this process is so cool because going in and just noticing the sensations and witnessing them without forcing them to change or do anything actually gives them space to start shifting. And this is all being held in the nervous system. So a little bit of a nervous system primer. <clears throat> We're talking about your autonomic nervous system. So you can think autonomic, you can think automatic. These are things that are happening automatically without your conscious thought. These are not things that you are directing with your thought, though thought can support them. So taking care of, you know, your your autonomic nervous system takes care of your organs doing what they do. You know, you don't have to sit there and think like, okay, heart pump, right? So this is stuff that's happening automatically. So your nervous system is also always looking for cues of safety or danger or what we'll call threat. And it's always looking outward in your environment at other people. It's, it's looking via your senses. It's looking via your sight. It's looking via your, you know, kinesthetic sense of like, of touch, of temperature, moisture, dryness. And it's also looking for um, cues inward in your own body of what's happening. And this is all happening subconsciously. This isn't like thought where you're like tracking, you know, oh, cues of threat, cues of safety. This is happening so fast in your nervous system. And when your nervous system detects cues of safety, then you're like, you feel relaxed, you feel connected, creative, engaged, you feel energized. Um, you feel, you know, safe, you feel safe. And it's this sense of safety really is the foundation for health in so many ways, which I don't think I'm going to get to in this episode, because we could, I could just talk about this for hours, we could go on and on and on here. But um, if your nervous system is detecting cues of threat, whether that's perceived threat, and there's not actually something threatening in your environment, or actual threat, then your nervous system is going to shift out of that safety, it's going to take resources in your body, like especially oxygen, away from supporting these uh, your systems and your feelings of safety. And it's going to do whatever it can to protect you and to protect your body. And so that can look like mobilization, which is like fight flight, you've probably heard. And that's a lot of energy, very energized. Your nervous system directs oxygen to your muscles so that you can boom, pounce or punch or whatever and address the threat. And in your everyday life, if you're kind of like always, you know, anxiety and agitation would be examples of that part of your nervous system being activated. But it can also respond to a threat with immobilization, which looks like shutdown mode. And <laughs> this is where my nervous system tends to dwell in response to threat. So I know it very well. And I know very many people know this well. And this is where your body is like, okay, in order to, you might've heard like freeze as an example, but it's, it's also a little more nuanced than that, but we won't get into all that right now. So um, your body will be like, okay, let's conserve energy. Let's pretend we're dead. Let's conserve energy. Let's, uh, you know, let's just, I, your body is essentially like, I don't think we're going to, I don't think we can fight and I don't think we can flee. So let's shut down. And this is going all the way back to um, the response that like ancient reptiles have, you know, they are like freeze and like they can hold their breath for 20 minutes or even hours versus humans can't. So when humans or mammals go into this shutdown mode, it's actually very exhausting on your system. It's very taxing both any form of um, threat response is taxing on your system and will make you feel tired. So even though shutdown mode might look like you just want to lay on the couch all day and you feel like, you know, some things, indicators of this might be like, you feel it's really hard to get out of bed. You feel like, uh, I can't do it. So why bother? You know, no nothing I do is going to matter. So why bother? Um, you know, as a kid, I was in shutdown mode all the time and my parents thought I was lazy. And so I thought I was lazy, but I'm not actually lazy. I was just in shutdown mode. 
And I think a lot of people think they're just lazy and it's actually really just shut down mode. Their, their, their nervous system is so overwhelmed with some sort of real or perceived threat that it's just like, well, we can't fight against this. Let's just go into shutdown mode and endure and make it through. My therapist likes to say about shutdown mode, she says, it's like pressing the gas pedal and the brake at the same time. And you can imagine if you did that in a car, how, uh, how jerky and disastrous, you know, you'd be burning gas and getting nowhere and wearing out, you know, uh, your brake pads <laughs> in weird way, you know, you'd be like, Aah! so the, that's kind of like a nervous system primer. And why this matters is the state that your nervous system is in determines what kind of thoughts and feelings you have and determines how much energy you have. So there's a lot of stuff that, you know, mindset stuff that's like, change your thoughts, change your life. And it's true. You can change your thoughts and change your life. We'll get into that in a second, but really your thoughts actually are deter, you know, what, what access you have, the, t the type of thoughts you're having is actually a result of what state your nervous system is in. So if you're in shutdown mode, you might be having thoughts like, like I mentioned earlier, I can't, I can't even win. So why bother? You know, I can't even have any effect here. So why bother? This doesn't matter. I had, you know, and you feel fatigued, but in, um, in a state of safety, which is called ventral vagal. If you're want to get really nerdy with it here in a state of safety, your thoughts would just be like inspiration, creativity, you'd be ease. You'd feel ease in your body. You'd feel, um, yeah, it's like play, you know, think of when you're playing or you're in flow state or you're just relaxed without feeling depressed. You know, this is how that would have an indicator of that. And then being in your being activated in that fight flight and that mobilization, also called sympathetic nervous system. And then you might be like, um, I have to figure it out right now. If I don't figure it out, then uh, um, everything's going to fall apart. Like stuff like that, like really whoo, high energy, anxiety. So your nervous system, what state it's in determines what actually what kind of thoughts you're having. And when you shift your nervous system, the state that you're in, you actually start having different thoughts. And when you shift out of a threat response, either one back to safety, it actually opens up so much energy because all that energy that your body was putting towards protecting itself is now able to, is now unlocked for putting towards connecting, creating, making babies, whatever, you know, it's like, okay, all that energy, um, comes online for you to actually live your life and enjoy your life and engage with life instead of just protecting yourself against these threats. So all of this to say that I've been living my life mostly in a shutdown response. And this is in because of how my needs were or weren't met as a child and no shame on my parents. I'm not sitting here to, uh, shame or blame or throw things at my parents. You know, they were basically kids with their own trauma that they had not processed and had no idea about when I was born and they had no idea how to take care of themselves, much less me. So I'm acknowledged that, yeah, it's, this is because of them and how they took care of me. But now as an adult, it's my responsibility to heal and to shift and change. And of course I've had moments of like sadness and grief or anger around that, but in the end it's, it's ultimately, okay. Uh, how am I going to work with what I got now with the present moment? And so no shame, no blame. And if, this has happened with you and your parents. You might go through a lot of different feelings, or if you're a parent yourself and you know that you've, um, you know, inflicted some kind of trauma on your children, I just want to give you permission to forgive yourself. <laughs> this is and to forgive them. We won't even get into all that right now. Maybe we'll talk about that more. But this is also like a, res a result. All of this trauma is also a result of 
the system we live in, the system that does not support life, the system that is designed to keep us in threat responses so that we can be manipulated and controlled and we consume. And whew, like our system is not set up to support feelings of safety, to, to provide cues of safety. Our system is very much running on threat responses and throwing threats, cues of danger around all the time. So uh, yeah, you don't need to look very far to <laughs> examine how, how that might look, how might you might have seen that in your own life or in lives of your friends and family. So going back to my story here, as a child, my experience was one where my emotional needs were not met. You know, I had my physical needs mostly met, my, <laughs> mostly, I, you know, I had a house, I had food, I, I had water, um, but there were a lot of needs that weren't met and my parents didn't know how to meet those needs. And what that left me with, I guess this was coupled too with, you know, my mom being deep in her own trauma and not realizing it, not knowing this. And as her being my primary caretaker, I grew up with this story of, you know, watch from watching her, I grew up with this story of, I am the cause of her misery. And I saw her being really miserable around work and making money to take care of us. And I felt like not only am I the cause of her misery, but I'm also responsible for her happiness and helping her not feel misery. But no matter what I do, no matter how small I make myself or whatever I try, I can't make her misery go away. And you can see how this kind of loop, this really, <laughs> um crossed wires here of like whoa what's going on this story going on could lead to me being in shutdown mode most of life my life because i felt like wow uh no matter what i do i can't change the thing that i'm responsible for so why bother shutdown mode and at the same time i was taking in messages of um earning money earning money in any way will make me miserable and I'll lose my freedom because that's what I was witnessing in my mom. That's, that's what her experience was like. And within that, I also felt like it wasn't safe for me to have needs, much less have my needs met. So translate all of this into life as an adult. I have pretty much, I've done amazing things in my life and I've been gifted so much and at the same time, I've always been held back from earning money up until this point because of this unconscious wiring that at its core was ultimately trying to keep me safe and protect me because there was this message of my needs uh, don't matter. And even getting my needs met is a threat because I might, you know, make my mom even more miserable. And then that kind of subconscious understanding there is like, then I might be abandoned and die. And that's worse than just kind of enduring and suffering through this. So ultimately my nervous system was trying to protect me and these stories, well, <laughs> they aren't true. As an adult, I could connect the dots on some of these pieces of the story, but even just being aware of that and connecting the dots on that didn't heal them. It just made me aware of them. And I was like, well, now what do I do with it? And it wasn't until I started working with somatic therapy and engaging with the nervous system in its responses as they were showing up for me as an adult that this I was able to shift out of shutdown mode because I was pretty much always struggling in a shutdown mode for most of my life in some level of shutdown. Yeah, doing somatic therapy helped me help that part of me find safety. And so a note here is we go through the ner different nervous system states throughout our days. You know, we touch into different parts and it's not like um, the kind of fight flight activation 
it's called sympathetic nervous system. It's not like that's bad. And it's not like the, um, nerve, the state that you're in, it's called your dorsal nervous system. Your dorsal is bad. It's just these kind of examples that I've given here of shutdown and of anxiety are the extreme examples of being like stuck in those states. But we move more in blended states. We move in safety, but it's having a little bit of that sympathetic fight flight activation that helps us actually do things and move and, you know, <laughs> and take action. But we have one foot in safety too, one foot in the ventral vagal, which is safety. And if you can't remember these terms, that's okay. Just remember these concepts of like, you know, very, very, very energized, uh, you know, in that anxiety, fight, flight versus safety versus very low energy in that shutdown mode that that works too. And then, you know, resting and relaxing, we have a little bit of healthy dorsal, that kind of low energy state on board. You know, if you're just kind of hanging out, watching TV, <laughs> probably have a little bit of dorsal in with that safety. So what's happening too is we're always kind of moving through different levels of being in these different states in our nervous system. What happens is we move a little bit more activated and then we come a little more back to safety and then a little more activated, a little back to safety. And trauma happens when we move out of safety and into activation and we can't come back to safety. We get stuck. We get stuck in that activation. We get stuck in that anxiety, that fight flight, or we get stuck in that shutdown and exhaustion and fatigue, and we can't come back to safety. And healing is literally helping your nervous system create pathways back to safety from these activated states that don't have access to safety. They're stuck in trauma because they, they don't have a pathway to safety. And so it's something that is kind of like gardening. It's not something that you don't plant a seed and then it just instantly grows. You have to tend to it and then it grows and then it blooms and then boom, and they have this beautiful flower and fruit and seeds and you, you can expand, you can plant all the seeds and you have more flowers and it just keeps growing more beautiful. So it's kind of like that with your nervous system. You have to tend to your nervous system to help it grow pathways back to safety. I mean, there's like a physiological process happening in your body. It's not just like thinking and oh, poof. It's like, whoa, no, you have to um, help bridge that gap between that part of you that is stuck in this activated state and the part of you that does know um, that is in safety. And that's why somatic therapy is so amazing is because it works with the nervous system to go into those parts of you that are, you know, have trauma, that are stuck in a trauma response, that are stuck in the activation and slowly, gently support them in finding safety. And once you find safety, then you're no longer stuck there. Then the whole story changes because remember, state of your nervous system determines what story you're telling. So for me, my old money story, okay, I'm going to connect the dots back here because as a kid, I told you, like, I felt like I was um, the cause of my mom's misery and I was responsible for her misery and making money would make me miserable and I would lose my freedom and my needs don't matter and it's not safe to have my needs met. So that was the story going on. And that translated as an adult to working my butt off and even creating a a job, a, a business that gave me a lot of my own freedom because I value freedom very highly, free spirit here, hello. But making sure that I did not get paid for it because if I got paid for it, even though I had created this business that I love, then I would be miserable. That's, the, that's one of the stories that was happening as an adult. And on top of that, you know, ha getting paid, earning money allows you to have your needs met. And so it was like double threatening. 
of like, oh, I'll be miserable. I'll lose my freedom. I guess triple threatening because I'll be miserable. I'll lose my freedom. And if I have my needs met, that's not safe. I might be abandoned and be even worse off than I am now. So that was the kind of state I was like, I was like working my butt off to create all this stuff and help people and I'm loving it. And yet not being safe receiving and having my needs met so that I could sustain and keep going. And I was even really great at like helping other people earn money. I love money. I, I really do. It's just that my nervous system was like, this is not safe. <laughs> and it was doing everything it could to keep me safe. And that looked like, uh, like I've said a bunch of times already, you know, not earning money making sure everyone else is earning money who wanted to earn money. So we have some volunteers. So thank you volunteers, but we have paid contractors and a team. So making sure they were earning money and um, that the business, we were putting money back into the business and doing all this stuff. Yeah. But making sure I didn't get any or enough to kind of feel like anything that could really meet my needs. So of course this, you know, as I mentioned, made it really difficult in my marriage because my husband was feeling a lot of pressure and rightfully so. I mean, if he never wanted to like be a sole breadwinner and he's seeing me work my butt off and not get paid, you know, I, uh, of course, like <laughs> he's kind of like calling me out there. Um, and yeah, that was hard. It was really hard. But <laughs> In, let's see, I started somatic therapy in August 2020 and a little over August, a year and a half into it, I had had so many sessions about money and my parents, of course, and childhood stuff and so much of it centered on money, 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 and the feelings that money brought up in me and those feelings that it brought up, the sensations in my body were sensations related to the threat response. And so we worked with them to help that threat response discharge and help my body find safety. And in January, I reached what I call a critical mass of safety. It's not something I could have planned for. It's not something that I know how to quantify. You know, it just, my, my system tipped from threat response around money to safety. And the, the thing that tipped it was so cool. It was so cool. It was very clear to me and the effects of it unfolded very quickly, which I'll get into. But so my husband and I were in a couples session with his therapist and I freaking love couples therapy. Y'all, if you've ever been thinking of trying therapy on your own or couples therapy, and if your partner is open to that, I definitely recommend it because Ultimately, therapy, no matter what type of therapy you're doing, it is helping you find safety in yourself and find safety with each other and be each other's greatest supports for finding safety where you have felt a threat response probably your whole life. <laughs> so in this couples session, I brought up that I felt like even if I did earn money, it wouldn't be mine to do what I wanted with anyways. There was a part of me that just felt that way. And it was very present for me in that moment. And so I talked about it and I cried a lot actually too, you know, there was a lot held in there and it was really eye opening for my husband to see that. And he can, he could like kind of connect the dots on why I might feel that way. And it was so cool. Cause he was able to be like, Oh, well, what do you need then in order to feel like it is yours to do? what you want with it is your money and from there we were able to have that conversation and i was able to like think about like well what do i want or need in order for it to feel like my own money and i had thought about it before but now that it was happening in relationship and this was coming out you know i was able to articulate that and explore that and over the next couple of days i really dove in i got super inspired and dove in and and articulated that out of this, put it down, you know, I have a background in science. And so I'm very into um, getting clear on like, what are measurable, tangible things <laughs> in, in anything, whether it's from an intention that I'm manifesting to um, 
guiding someone in their marketing of the outcomes they get. I love tangible, measurable things. And I love the immeasurable too, obviously, else I wouldn't be here in this, uh, this earth speak space, of course. So I got very clear on that and felt really good. I talked about my husband with it and he was supportive. And so, okay, cool. That was like, great. I felt relief, but it wasn't clear until about a week later. I looked back and I was like, oh my God, this was some sort of critical mass of safety. I didn't know it at the exact moment it happened, but within a week I was like, oh my gosh. So what happened? And this is where I think therapy crosses into the mystical for me with manifesting. And I think I don't really like calling it manifesting because there's already so much out there about what people think manifesting is. And my version of it is very different in a lot of ways. So I like to call it co-creating with the universe because I really do feel like I'm always in this um, co-creative conversation in myself, in my subconscious, in my conscious, and with all, you know, this with spirit and nature and everyone all around me. I feel like this is, we're in in this co-creative dance. And maybe I'll get a little bit more into that in a little bit, but within a week i was suddenly fully booked for the next uh month i guess with marketing clients and i hadn't even advertised it's kind of funny it's kind of ironic because i hadn't even marketed myself as such as doing this but i i y'all i love messaging marketing communications i mean it's what's really helped me grow earth speak is this this uh, love for communications and marketing. And within a week, I was fully booked with clients who wanted to work with me to help them with their marketing. And they were paying me a really good fee. And it was freaking awesome. I felt awesome. I did not feel scared. I did not feel like I was going to lose my freedom. I did not feel all those old things. I did not have those same old threat responses. And that's where, that's why I say like this, um, healing in the nervous system really intersects with the mystical of our co-creative relationship with the living universe. Cause if you're listening to this, I'm guessing you're probably an animist and get what I'm saying here because I did not ever even say, Oh, I really would like to just start offering myself uh, as a you know full time as a marketer, as helping people with their messaging and marketing. The universe was like, ah, my my inner my friend Naomi Love likes to call it resonance. Your resonance is like the whole energetic signature of your conscious and unconscious and your spirit of what's what's that energy you're carrying. And to me, your the resonance, my resonance is the whole of what I'm communicating in, in co-creation with the universe. And so I feel like this nervous system shift, finding that critical mass of safety and that healing, these parts of me that were stuck in fear and in shutdown mode that were able to find safety at last. And I call it a critical mass of safety because I feel like it's there's layers, of course. And I had found so many little layers of safety in the year and a half up until that point. And even you know before that, I have done a lot of healing work. But there was just something about it. It's like, okay, maybe that whole, all the, like a critical mass of pathways to safety were found in my body and threat response was gone. And the universe responded by being like, how about this, Natalie? And I was like, why, thank you for serving me that on a silver platter because that's right up my alley and I didn't even know. Thank you. So that's how that went. (laughs) And... Over the next few weeks from there, I started started working with my clients and it was amazing. And I had more energy in my body, like good at not like agitation energy, but just like focus and energy and just ability to just do what I had to do and move and go. I, it was so amazing. It was completely different than most of my life. I it, all of that energy that was keeping me in shutdown mode suddenly came online into that safety, that space of safety. And I felt 
truly alive at 38 years old. I had just turned 38 when this all was happening. I felt truly alive for the first time. And I have felt like a pretty alive person, but that was like, whoa, this is next level. Wow. I, I am still, it is what may now, I am still grateful every day in every single moment. Like I'm going to get teary eyed for the difference that I feel from moving out of shutdown mode into this critical mass of safety and feeling so much energy and vibrancy. And I used to wonder my whole life, I was like, how can people handle doing everything they do? How can they handle going to work and having kids and like having hobbies and whatever? Like I can do, you know, I, I'm a human design reflector. So I thought that was a huge part of it. I was like, maybe I just don't have as much energy as everyone, but honestly, it's not true. I, well, I might not have as much energy as everyone <laughs> definitely manifesting generators. I see you. I work with a lot of you. I love you. And I don't have that level, <laughs> but I have way more than I thought I did. And that's because I've been living in a trauma response in that shutdown mode for, you know, 38 years. And over the years, I have had more and more energy and more and more aliveness, but I had never felt anything like this. This was, it felt miraculous to me, honestly. I mean, it was like, wow, this made every moment of my life completely worth it to feel even one minute of this amazing energy and aliveness. So I guess I'm sharing this too, because if you're someone who's had a lot of trauma and you feel like no matter nothing you do really helps you, you know, maybe a little bit, but nothing really gets you out of there. Um, there's hope it's possible. And, you know, some of what I think brought me here, of course, I must name privilege because I have privilege to get therapy and I had privilege to, yeah, have the space I needed to process a lot of this. And at the same time, it's also because I have been asking for support and guidance for healing and the universe over the years has brought me that and brought me that and brought me that. And doing something like somatic therapy would have been way too scary and threatening to me even like six years ago. I feel like all the healing I've done and intuitive development and the community building and everything I've done so far has been so healing and helped me find safety, so much safety and help me grow and come alive and really step into my purpose, which feels amazing. And it's funny because creating art speak is actually what helped bring me to somatic therapy because we had our very first workshop or no, our very first workshop was inner alchemy with Naomi love. And that was, a form of somatic therapy and it's amazing. And if you are a collective member, please go do that workshop. And if you're not a collective member and you want to try it, join the collective and do the workshop. <laughs> and then in June, 2020, we had Luis Mojica come teach a workshop called body speak, where he taught about somatic therapy. And at the same time, some of our members had been doing somatic therapy and friends of mine have been doing it. And everyone was like, the universe was like, yo, Natalie, Here's the synchronicity, somatic therapy. And so within a month of, uh, I guess within a month and a half of that workshop with Luis, I had found myself a somatic therapist and started the journey. And I don't think up until, you know, a few years prior, I, like I said, I, I don't think I would have felt safe enough even doing that kind of therapy because I was just so activated in a trauma response in my life and earth speak and this work following, you know, the little steps by little steps brought me eventually to what helped me. And somatic therapy isn't necessarily a silver bullet and it's not necessarily for everyone, but I'm sharing my story here and how it helped me and it might help you. And I think, I do think understanding the nervous system and helping your nervous system find safety, whatever way that works for you is the key that unlocks healing. That's foundational. I also want to mention that I've been working with Kat Lee um, in her BAM business alchemy mentorship since November 2021. And that's been huge for me. So that, you know, she approaches this from a very trauma informed space as well. And 
wow, yeah, her work has helped me connect. And I had no idea that there was a little inner bunny rabbit <laughs> and spirit guiding me. And um, she, her works have really helped me do some of that inner child work that it really supplemented the therapy I was doing in a way that my therapist just wasn't, you know, I don't know, working with a business coach is totally different than working with a therapist, different type of relationship, different type of focus. And so, yeah, that has been huge for me. And Kat is going to be doing uh, BAM again this uh, September 2022. So definitely, if you're interested, I highly recommend it. I want to talk more about the intersection of healing trauma and working with the nervous system and conscious co-creation of the living universe, the really mystical thing. Like how when I reached that critical mass of safety, the universe was like, hey, how about some marketing clients? And they were like dream clients too. Like I go to work with them and it feels like I'm playing and I'm like, I can't believe they're paying me lots of money for this because it's so fucking fun. <laughs> but also I'm really grateful that they're paying me money because uh now I get to earn money and it feels awesome and I love earning money and it's had a whole cascade of effects which maybe I'll get into and I'm definitely I want to note here I am so open to questions comments whatever you got um reflections yeah you can feel free to hit me up on Instagram on my personal, I'm, we're transitioning our uh, Instagram to be not only run by me. So please hit me up on, on my personal. It's at natalie.alexandra.ross. And I also have um, a business Instagram at Natalie Ross Media, all one word there. So hit me up there and ask me questions, share your stories, whatever. I'm into it. I think, uh, this stuff is huge and I really, really, really want to help people heal their nervous systems and heal their trauma because fuck, it sucks. Trauma, being in a trauma response sucks. And this really is the key to feeling alive and so much more to bringing forward your purpose to unlocking connection, abundance, creativity, inspiration, intuition. There's so much here. I'm just, I'm obsessed. I've been joking in the collective because we've been talking about the nervous system a lot lately. I've been joking that I'm nervous system Natalie now. <laughs> and also if you're in the collective, if you're interested in joining the collective, um, we have a lot of nervous system support type workshops and resources. So if you go into our workshops, we have the body speak with Luis Mojica. And then we did another workshop with Luis Mojica about co-regulating with nature. And we have um, Ashney, did a workshop on EFT and somatics. Um, Kat Lee is our resident coach. She holds a uh, trauma healing circle once a month. And then she has a bunch in that coaching section. There's a bunch of lesson classes she's taught about that. And also the workshop we did with Kat Lee on the alchemy of fear is a really great um resource for working with your nervous system and then inner alchemy like i said with naomi love she teaches that process and it's really beautiful and powerful had helped shauna have a major major integration just from doing that workshop which led her to be able to become a finisher and finish some things that she had not um finished in her life that she you know she, i'll let her tell it's not my story to tell but she loves it she loves inner alchemy i love it too and we have so many more. I mean, I told I, I told you that making Earth Speak helped me find somatic therapy, like creating, just following my intuition and following what really spoke to me in the calling led me exactly to here. It's awesome. Okay, so back to the intersection of trauma healing and the mystical, that co-creative relationship with the universe. Manifesting to me is not about thinking the right thoughts. Thought does have play a part in it. And thought actually can be helpful in helping us shift our nervous system states. But so often thinking the right thoughts is just reshuffling whatever thoughts you're having rooted in or based on whatever state your nervous system is in. So if your nervous system is in a threat response and you're like, I got to think the right thoughts you're probably just reshuffling some like anxiety thoughts and not really actually shifting your nervous system. Thought, however, can help 
to shift your nervous system. And I'm not going to get into that right now. So it's not like bad or wrong or anything by any means, but I just want to bring some clarity there of like so much rhetoric around manifesting is around think the right thoughts and stay high vibe. But really I find that when I get clear on something that I want, if I'm like, Ooh, I want something. And it doesn't even have to be something big. It can be something small, but let's go more towards something a little bigger because something small usually doesn't have that much activation around it. So I notice, okay, say I want something and it's, uh, I don't have it obviously or else, you know, if I had, it, I wouldn't want it because I would have it. Then the universe responds by bringing me situations or motivations that either get me just moving and moving with ease and flow. There's no like pushing or forcing. There's just, I'm just find myself doing, I find myself moving. Even if that's, I find myself getting up and just tidying up. I don't know. I find myself moving. It's just like this, I'm being moved almost and it's effortless and easy and it doesn't have to be dramatic or drastic. It can be so simple and mundane. It's like the tidying up. I find myself tidying up. I find myself just doing this thing. And the other opportunities I see the universe bringing are situations that tap me into or bring up the places that I have some sort of fear or threat response around having that which I desire. And they're not coming up because I'm low vibe or whatever, or didn't think the right thoughts. They're coming up because the universe is like, okay, if you want that, you know, your, your nervous system is like, Ooh, that's a threat. I'm going to protect you by keeping you from having that. You cannot have that because that is not safe. So finding safety really does unlock this ability to attract what you desire. <laughs> and in, in this living conversation with the living universe. And so these situations will arise that are not there to tell you that you can't have the thing or you shouldn't have the thing or you did something bad or you did something wrong. They're there because it's like, oh, well, here's the way that this is um, bringing up a threat response. Is this isn't safe for you. Here's an opportunity for you to work through that. And then if you know the context of your nervous system, if you know the context of you can recognize what state your nervous system is in, you can know the context of, instead of like getting dragged down by the story. Cause we put our minds are so fast. We have a nerve we shift our nervous system state. And then our minds instantly are like, Ooh, story, 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 meaning, meaning, meaning. Our minds are like meaning making machines and they put all this meaning onto it. And they're like, Oh, she doesn't like me or I did bad or wrong or whatever. Blah, blah, blah. But really it's just like, okay, if you can recognize like, Oh, I'm putting this story on this, but I'm actually just in a threat response and you have the resources and support, whether that's on your own or with others or with a therapist to help you find safety, then you can create pathways to safety from whatever that threat response is. And then there you will find yourself just moving or being moved or just doing or having being brought opportunities for whatever it is that you were wanting. And I guess like for me, I wanted to make money. And I found myself coming up against situations that brought up uh, the places where it was a threat to me. And I was able to work through them and help those parts of me find safety. And when I reached that critical mass of safety, which I couldn't calculate or plan for or anything, it was, it's really that moment of grace <laughs> within that week. And I don't know, you know, there's no like specific timelines on the universe's co-creation with you, but within a week, the universe was like, here's ways for you to make money. And they were way more delightful beyond anything. I would have probably been like, here's what I'm going to do. <laughs> here's how I want you to bring me money. And of course you can probably be like, yeah, I want to, I want to make money in this way. And the universe will bring you opportunities to work through that stuff. And, um, you know, there's no right or wrong way to do this, but this is my experience of being, having agency in creating with the living universe and co-creating. And that's why I like calling it co-creating because it's not really like 
ooh, I'm going to think and then manifest this thing. It's just going to appear. I really feel like I'm in this dance and this relationship and with, with life and consciousness itself through being embodied. And it's so psychedelic and cool. And I want to talk a little bit too about like, there's no right or wrong thing to manifest or desire or want. I think that even if you want something that you know is just superficial or whatever, whatever, want it. Because this is all an experience and a journey. And I think a lot of times people do want things because that's what they think will bring them safety when what they really want is that feeling of safety. And still it's okay. It's okay if you want something because you think it'll bring you safety. And a lot of times these things that we think will bring us safety are things that this very toxic system itself told us we need in order to be safe, but that actually don't bring safety because safety comes from tending your nervous system and knowing how to shift into that state of safety. <laughs> so a lot of times people want things that they think are going to bring them that safety and they wouldn't put it in those words. Like, you know, I want a Lam Lamborghini, like typical, like kind of bro market. I mean, you know, I think about bro marketing a lot because so I'm like, okay, how can we, what's, what else is possible besides bro marketing? Right. <laughs> and I get served a lot of ads on YouTube of like, um, I used to, and not so much anymore, but the, the bros with their mansion and their Lamborghini and, you know, people were told to want to amass wealth because that's what will make them safe to amass things. And when you get all those things and you get all that wealth and you realize you still feel anxious or you still don't feel alive like you thought you would, it's because those feelings come from what state your nervous system is in. So if you want those things, great. And if you want to feel like really alive and wealthy, I mean, I feel like nervous system health is wealth. I mean, obviously money has real power in this world. I am not ever going to say it doesn't because it does. And even though the system has ascribed power to things that aren't really true to what life and our bodies are in like, like a, to a power that serves life, these things that these things that the system gives power to really do have an impact and effect and they do um, matter on our lives. So, you know, it's not like, I don't know, got the whole tangent, whole rabbit hole there. Okay. Where was I going? Let me take a sip of water here. So this living conscious co-creative relationship with the universe, I find for me, I have reclaimed so much agency and found so much sovereignty in healing my nervous system and seeing how that is what allows me access to my creativity. That is what allows me access to my intuition. That is what allows me access to connection and community and satisfying relationships. It's what allowed, it's what has allowed my body to be more healthy than ever because now my energy is and my body's resources are being put towards safety, rest, digest, restore, repair, instead of uh, address threat, address threat, address threat, which is very taxing on the system. And yeah, this finding safety really has been the root of everything that like I want in life, <laughs> feeling connected, feeling creative, feeling on purpose, earning money, um, being healthy and really feeling safe and sovereign and in my power. I think there's a lot of talk in these circles around, you know, being in your power and something that, you know, I've gotten, I've gotten here by way of developing my intuition and cultivating this sense of connection with the earth and nature and spirit and community and myself, which is pretty much that connection with self, others, nature, and spirit is underlies like everything I do. It's a huge part of my purpose for being, I feel. Well, I was just going to go on a whole tangent there. <laughs> but yeah, um, being finding the safety in my nervous system has brought that. It's brought all that. 
So, yeah, I just wanted to share a little bit about my story here and okay, where I was going, I remember now. I was talking about intuition. Intuition brought me here and developing this relationship with nature and spirit brought me here and learning about my nervous system and going through and doing this somatic work, somatic therapy. It's work. It's also play because it's joyful in the end. It feels really good. You know, it feels bad for a second when you tap into the stuff that still hurts, but then it feels really good when you find safety and you find healing and support and nourishment. It's awesome. And this work that I've been doing is in this connection with my body and my nervous system truly is the most tangible embodied form of intuition that I've ever known. And the most direct route to cultivating and trusting my intuition and my power in co-creative uh, agency with this living universe. And because of that, we are shifting. And also Sean is a super nervous system, safety, healing, trauma, healing nerd too. And you'll he hear more from us because we're going to do an episode together soon about our journey recently and kind of where we're headed. But because of this, we're shifting a lot of our focus at Earthspeak and especially in the collective. Like what we do there already is nourishing and supportive to the nervous system. But I'm now in um, a certification program for somatic experiencing, which is the modality Luis Mojica uses. And he's the one who introduced it to me and is the modality that my therapist uses. And I really love it. It's so powerful and gentle and just intelligent. It is so cool. It is so cool. So I'm in a uh, process of getting trained and certified for that. It's a three year process, but we get to start working with it as you know, immediately I've, I've been working with it with my clients in marketing, which that's a whole nother tangent and rabbit hole. I want to go down, but maybe not right now. Maybe I'll just touch on it a little bit, but yeah, this, this agency, this awareness, of what state my nervous system is in and this cognitive understanding, this thinking of the context of nervous system and why it matters and how it impacts my life. And this ability to support my nervous system and finding safety, this agency is everything. And it is so much more direct and tangible and powerful than any intuitive or spiritual system I've used. And it goes really well hand in hand with, um, I like to use my clairvoyance for doing energy work on myself and for co-creating with the universe. It's, I find that it accelerates, it clarifies that intention, that resonance of what I'm putting out there of what I desire. And it accelerates the universe, the universe's ability to, um, deliver me those opportunities to either do it or experience that which I desire or work through the stuff that uh, isn't safe around having that desire. So I really love clairvoyance exercises and you might love stuff like that too, but without the nervous system work, um, that other work just feels really turbulent or it can feel really turbulent because it can bring up a lot of stuff and, and then with no way to work through it. And I think a lot of, um, spiritual practitioners, you know, there's, there's everywhere I look, I can't help but see things through the nervous system now. And I'm like, wow, I kind of wish everyone was like trauma informed in this way of understanding the nervous system and what trauma is in terms of like safety versus threat and then understanding how to help people come back to safety. Cause this is so important. I feel like if everybody knew this for themselves and for each other, we would have a completely different planet. Like I want to live in the world where we are helping each other find safety. How freaking cool is that? Because it's in that state of safety that I get the best downloads and intuitive knowings and inspirations and ideas that just pop in from spirit and are like, wow, these are really cool things. Like we get to go to the next level of instead of just always working through the stuff, then we get to create and play and just experience more and more joy and beauty and expression 
and connection in this embodied form, which is so special. So yeah, in the collective and in Earth Speak, we're moving more towards um, teaching around the nervous system. And like I mentioned earlier, we already have a lot of resources for this that are very tangible and grounded that you can go in and work with them right now, especially like um, Kat Lee's teachings, the, the alchemy of fear, and then her teachings and the coaching. If you want to get like a little more detailed around the nervous system and what I talked about today, she teaches more about that. And we are moving towards um, creating the collective to be an experience where we are first helping members create awareness around their own nervous system and learn this context of why it matters and then have that agency to move through what's coming up. And this is not to replace therapy. I think doing one-to-one -one therapy, if you can afford it or have access to that, absolutely. You can find people who are certified in somatic experiencing who aren't therapists, who are maybe a little more affordable than a licensed therapist, who do great, great work. And you can go to, um, I think it's traumahealing.org. We'll put the note, the link in the show notes. But if you look up somatic experiencing, you'll find it. They have a list of practitioners that you can go through and work with them. There's amazing people doing amazing stuff there. So you don't necessarily have to work with a licensed therapist. But this is a great um, addendum, or I don't know, is that that's not the right where this is a great addition to any other healing work you're doing or to your spiritual practice, because there's so much cool stuff. I'm going to be getting more into nervous system stuff because I'm nervous system Natalie now and I am a nerd for this. Oh, y'all. Mm, 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 it's so fun. But um, some really cool things about our nervous system. One cool thing is uh, finding safety. There's a, a route to safety baked into our nerve, baked into us. It's just like who we are as mammals, as humans. In that connecting with others, being with others who are displaying cues of safety helps us feel safe and feel connected. That is that feeling of connection. And so without even knowing about the nervous system and without even knowing all this stuff, I was so drawn to that. And Shauna was so drawn to that. And that's why we created Earth Speak in the Collective in the first place. <laughs> without even knowing all this context, but this context just brings it into focus. And now it can be even more effective because we've noticed that sometimes, even though this um, gathering with others face to face and being live with them and hearing their voices and speaking and, and seeing their faces actually helps our nervous systems find safety. There are some folks and myself in the past, I am raising my hand, I have been this, and I still feel this sometimes, especially in new places or new groups for whom being in a group is very activating, is very scary and a threatening. And that's just because of a trauma response. And so we're working to create resources for people for whom that might be happening, but who want to connect and want to be in community and helping them work through that and heal so that they can experience the joy of being connected face to face in community with others and feel safe with others in that way because it's so nourishing it is so it, as humans we need this this is like a nutrient to us this connection and gathering being with others and this is why so many of us crave you know that kind of old village lifestyle where we wish we could all just be with our village and be together in that way and how, why our modern world puts us alone in these houses and we work alone all day maybe if you're working from home you know this is not how we're wired to be like of course i'm an introvert so i get it i love my alone time but having healed so much trauma of that i've had a lot of social anxiety and working through that wow it is so cool to just see kind of the doors that open and the experiences of joy and purpose and fulfillment and just ease that come from being able to be with others. So I'm kind of rambling here. Um, 
I just think it's really cool that that's baked into us as humans and in, baked into our nervous systems. And so as the EarthSpeak Collective is already a community, we're, we're bringing in resources to help people navigate their own nervous systems and work to use this coming together in community to their advantage to help heal their nervous systems. And another cool thing is having a connection with spirit and with nature, with the earth. They are also amazing um, resourcing relationships your relationship with spirit and your relationship with the earth and nature. Because I know for me, nature was one of the only beings I felt safe and supported by as a kid. It was a space that I could go and feel safe. I mean, of course, there's like, watch out for the poison ivy, watch out for the whatever, the snake, even though snakes are cool. Poison ivy is cool, but I don't want to touch it, you know, and I don't want to get bit. Um, there are real threats in nature, but nature overall felt very nourishing and supportive to me and was a sanctuary of safety for me as a child and all the way up through to now. I mean, I'm, <laughs> obviously we're here right, or speak. And same with spirit. You know, I didn't really find spirit as a sanctuary and support of safety until later because I grew up in a religion that I did not identify with or feel safe in and just kind of wrote, I thought I was an atheist and I wrote off um, spirituality until I couldn't ignore it. <laughs> and now it's, you know, finding that relationship with spirit is my relationship with this co-creative universe that I feel like I'm always in this beautiful conversation with and dancing with and supported by, I feel like ultimately the universe is bringing me opportunities and support and resources to find safety and heal and bring forward more of whatever that creation and expression is that I'm a vessel for as this human body and spirit and human body. And so your relationship with spirit is a potential really resourcing um, relationship for helping find safety and healing. I mean, I know it has been for me. It's what helped get me to the point that I could even do something like somatic therapy without feeling completely weird and freaked out. So yeah, of course, there's also, there's so many, so much more to talk about, so much more. So whatever your questions are or your aha moments or whatever, um, yeah, let me know. I'd love to hear because I can create more episodes and resources and such specifically tailored to what your needs are. So if there's something you're, you're like, wow, I'm really struggling with this. How would this relate or really want to learn about? this, how would that relate, you know? Oh, I want to mention one more thing, intuition. Um, Cause I talked a little bit about the nervous system being intuition embodied. And what's so cool to me is in my experience of healing, like I've always been very intuitive and I've always been, you know, deeply connected to the subtleties of nature speaking to me and of my intuition speaking to me. And then I've consciously cultivated that connection over the years so that now it's just something that is kind of ever present. I'm ever presently noticing it and working with my body and my nervous system in this way have helped me even, I already had a very deep sense of trust in my nervous system and my intuition, but it helped deepen it even more. And it, you know, I think people can often mistake uh, what is actually a fear response for being their intuition and then think like, oh, I shouldn't do that or that's bad or wrong. But now I know so that fear response is a fear response and let's work with the nervous system instead of just taking that at face value as intuition. And I think that's something where a lot of people get crossed wires about intuition versus fear and this really brings it into the body in such a deeper way. I, I, I'm not going to go on the whole rabbit hole here, but let me just check and see if there's anything else I wanted to mention. Oh, I think that pretty much every religion has codified this awareness of what I'm speaking or of where the nervous system intersects with the mystical. I think pretty much every religion has codified this in their own system of understanding and some use it to help their people heal 
while others use this knowledge to control people through keeping them feeling unsafe unless they obey. And so I think understanding this, like this unlocks the doors to so much freedom and true personal power in softness without having to wear all the armor. I don't know if, about you, but I've definitely felt like I've had, to, I'm, I'm this tender soul. And I speak, this is like people I speak to all the time feel this way too. Like, I know if you're listening, you might feel this way. <laughs> But we're such tender souls. I'm such a tender soul. And I've had to put on so much armor just to exist in the world. But in this nervous system healing, I now tr feel like my true rabbit spirit. I'm like a little rabbit bunny, rabbit. This little bunny, I can come and be, I can be safe. I She's come out to play and doesn't need all the armor. And yet at the same time, there's like this puma that protects me, this puma within me, that knows that if it needs to come on board, it can fuck some shit up and protect me if it needs to. But I don't need to go walk around with these like tons of armor and weapons and things just to like exist in the world. And I think that that's, so many people are so burdened by that. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna pause here because I think I'm just gonna keep rambling. And um, that's that last little bit I wanted to share because now that you have the context of nervous system and where it intersects with the mystical, and if you come from a religion that felt toxic to you and you're reclaiming your spirituality, maybe some nervous system healing is in order to reclaim that agency from where the religion wired your nervous system to feel unsafe unless you did what they told you to do. So there's that. Oh, right. Thank you so much for listening to my story. Again, questions, comments, welcome. DM me or just email. Um, yeah. Let me know what else you'd like to hear more about. And I guess I'll just give myself a quick plug here. So, Natalie, what do you offer and where can people find you? <laughs> well, thanks for asking. Um, I offer obviously the Earthspeak Collective, and we're in a little bit of a shift. I mean, we're still operating as is, but we are shifting and bringing on those resources. But uh, both Shauna and I have um, taken on full time jobs now. She is now working as a florist, amazing magical florist, which she loves. And she's going to school for co in college in her final semester. And I have started working full time with marketing clients. So we have our team is continuing to run Earthspeak. It's kind of just kind of running right now. And we still are showing up in our calls and they're amazing. And workshops are coming back in June. Took a little short break while we we're kind of reorganizing all this. But um, yeah, you can join the collective, access those resources I talked about that can help you with understanding your own nervous system and having some exercises and tools to work with. Those are all in the collective. And and I imagine they'll be in the show notes too. Um, we'll have Jade, our editor. Hi, Jade. Thank you. Jade will write out the uh, workshops I mentioned so that if you are in the collective, you can go find them and do them. And then I'm offering marketing and messaging coaching for conscious entrepreneurs who really don't feel like the typical way of marketing is for them who are like, oh, I have something to offer the world, but I don't know how to talk about it. And I feel kind of gross offering it because marketing's so manipulative and weird. Like if that's you and you have a proven offer, I'm working right now with people who have proven offers, which means you've at least sold it once or twice or a couple times and that you've at least gotten results with people, whether it's a product or a service, and that you enjoy it and you wanna invest in growing that and offering that to more people, um, then I can help you. And I help people with this by doing a 10 week coaching experience where we do stuff not only to get clear on your messaging, but we also work with your nervous system and include you in this. It's trauma-informed marketing that includes you as the marketer, as the business owner in the equation of 
what's coming up for you around being seen or understood or heard or getting your needs met that you know your nervous system's like whoa now let's not do that let's not market ourselves uh that's scary and that's not safe so we do gentle nervous system work around those places as they arise and we clarify your offer so we go in and we're like okay what are you doing and then what are you really doing which is really fun because that's where we break down like what are the steps that you're taking people through these broad strokes of how you help them and we i like to do this with people because articulating uh how you help them in this way what process that you're going to take them through you don't tell them every little detail but like broad strokes lets them have some agency and consent and sovereignty and whether they're willing to do that because so often people market and sell things without telling people what they're really going to be doing once they get inside. And then they might buy something and, and show up and be like, oh, I don't want to do this. And then they don't do it. And then they're upset or they don't get the results or whatever. So I like this type of this approach to marketing where we share in a more transparent way. Well, what are we going to have the people do once they sign up to work with us? So that's another huge part of it. And it's probably one of my favorites. I love it all. I love doing it all because people are like, oh my gosh, aha moments left and right. And that's where the, um, a lot comes out around this. Also, I've been noticing this really instigates something. It catalyzes something in my clients that helps them get clear on what do they really want to be doing too. And then they're able to get even more clear in that and do work that they love and help people that they love even more and amplify that. So I talk about what I do. I talk about all of this. You can see all my process steps on my website, natalie.net and check it out. And if you're interested, um, yeah, go to natalie.net and you can learn more and you can reach out to me there. And you can find me on Instagram. My business is at Natalie Ross Media. And then my personal is at natalie.alexandra.ross. And yeah you can see me being silly having fun i'm just having a lot of fun on instagram right now so you can hang out with me there too thank you so much for listening if you enjoyed this episode share it with a friend and i cannot wait to connect with y'all again thank you so much all the roads are winding listen to over 200 free earth speak podcast episodes on your favorite podcast app and visit earthspeak.love to learn about our collective community and workshops.